They love this, it's their favorite part. But we get their temperature. <laughs> you see how quick that was? And we wanna make sure their temperature is above about 99 and below 101.5. I didn't tell you what a normal respiratory rate was, um, but we definitely want to worry about um, anything over about 30 to 40, but you might see them as low as 8, 10. If they're really in shape, that's totally normal. So that's the normal physical exam on a horse. Um, next, what we're going to do is say, okay, you come out, come out in the barn, and your horse has a giant cut, maybe right here on its leg and it's bleeding, and so you call us, but we can't get there right away. So what are you gonna do? First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna call us, of course. And then after that, or we're on our way there, you're gonna take handy dandy baby diaper. I don't know anything else to do with these except to use them on horses, because babies, no. Um, so you got a cut here and it's bleeding. So you're gonna take your baby diaper, you're gonna open it up, because these are super absorbent, apparently. And you're gonna smash it on your horse's leg. Thank you, baby girl. I don't need you to pick your foot up, but thank you. And we're going to take some duct tape, handy dandy duct tape. Duct tape, du duct tape fixes everything. And we're gonna put this on, and you wanna do it pretty tight because we wanna stop the bleeding, right? And we're gonna do it nice, tight bandage. And that's all you have to do until we get there. Uh, if, say, you have a laceration that's not bleeding, but it's there and you're waiting for us to come, cold hose. Cold hose it until we get there. Dilution is the solution to pollution. So you can just let the water run on it, and that's going to be great because it's going to help to get rid of any nastiness that's in that, in that wound. And um, finally, what we are going to show you is how to do a good foot bandage. So we have started a partial foot bandage here. Um, and I'm going to finish it up for you. It takes a little time to make, but I'm going to finish up how to make it. So what we've done, it's a little bit of a like crosshatch pattern. So we did some vertical pieces of duct tape, and we've done some horizontal wood pieces of duct tape. And Danielle's going to hand me a couple more pieces that we're going to finish this up. I recommend not doing this on a painted surface because you'll pull it off and then you'll pull your paint off. You don't want to do that. I may or may not have done that in the past. Um, and then if we have scissors, we may not. That's okay. I can rip it. It's okay, guys. You're good. Where did Janelle's getting these scissors? Well, Janelle's getting these scissors, because this are going to be a handy dandy foot wrap, but we're again going to use another cute little baby diaper. Thank you. Um, to put on our, our foot for a foot wrap. So we're going to pick up our foot. Just like you would if you had an abscess or if you were, if you had a, maybe a laceration kind of around her heel here or something like that. You take your little baby diaper and then you can let her actually even put her foot down. And you hook your little tabs. And you've got a good little diaper on there. And then Danielle's cutting our uh, foot bandage here. I like to cut the diagonals, and you'll see why in just a minute. Maybe, there we go. Perfect. That'll work. That'll work, perfect. So then we take our, our foot bandage here, our tape here. This is great because it's water resistant, so it's if they're gonna be out in some mud or whatnot, it's great. So you take the part that's within the little diagonals, put it on the bottom of the foot, and then you can flip this part up right here. And then flip the other part, the other diagonals up. And then the sides just go right up nice and neat and keep making a cute little booty. So that's a nice little foot bandage. So that's kind of your basic physical exam, bandaging, foot bandaging, um, and whatnot. And now, uh, Team two over there. Actually, they're team one because it's Dr. Latcher and she's number one, of course. But they're going to um, show you kind of if you're looking to where you might be able to get some of this bandaging material, 
your stethoscope, your thermometer, all the things you need. They have a, a fancy dancy first aid kit over there that they're going to go over you with and some other things. We're going to send you to the other side of the barn because we're doing the social distancing thing. So we keep them over there. Everybody hang on while we turn around. Hold on. There we go. We're going to give the cameraman a second. Make sure we get the thumbs up from him. Okay. Cameraman says go. Okay. So Janelle and I are going to talk about the first aid kit that you guys may have seen tease of earlier today. It's a pretty exciting first aid kit if we do say so ourselves. So we have a list of everything that's in it that we'll put up. Or first we'll, we'll zoom in on it when we're done, but we'll also um, post it on our Facebook page. So look for that. Um, also, we put these first aid kits together for you. So if you want to purchase one, give us a call here at the clinic and we can sign you up for one. It is everything that we have in here tonight will be in it when you get it from us. Um, and then we have a list of some things for you to add to it. Um, first aid kits are just wonderful things to have around. As you guys know, horses love to do horrible things to themselves. But this first aid kit comes with the added bonus that if you get it, you get a discount on a microchip for your horse. And with hurricane season coming to go along with COVID season, because that's not fair. We, uh, oh, thank you. Um, we should probably have all of our horses microchipped. It's the best way to determine that that horse is your horse by first responders when your horse gets loose, when the fence goes down. So our first aid kit, I'm gonna take my little cheat sheet here. Okay, so it's got pockets really, which is pretty exciting. Exactly. So we have plain triple antibiotic eye ointment. No horse should be anywhere without plain triple antibiotic eye ointment. Horses, you know, they have these big pretty eyes, but they like to stick them places that they shouldn't be. And triple antibiotic eye ointment is always our go-to. Eye ointments are a little bit scary. You always want to make sure that it's one that's approved by us. If it has a steroid in it, it can do horrible, horrible things to a horse eye very quickly. So triple antibiotic eye ointment. Bandage scissors to help you make your handy dandy foot bandage when you need it. A thermometer, we just learned about the T in TPR. Dun, dun, dun. That's pocket one. Dun, dun, dun. Ha, ha. A tray that has your stethoscope available in assorted colors. This one's got yellow. I think it's kind of snazzy. Mm -hmm. There's also pink so far. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so, so far we have pink. There may be other choices coming, but you can't be too picky with Amazon right now. Uh, eye wash, also not bad for washing out wounds um, that are small, like little minor wounds. Eye wash works really well for that. We have silver sulfadiazine. Uh, for those who've seen my big fat Greek wedding, the movie, this is my Windex. It really does fix everything, except this one's real as opposed to Windex. <laughs> Silver sulfadiazine is antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, literally all the things, and it's gentle enough to put in eyeballs and on wounds. So, wonderful stuff here. We have a dose syringe. This is basically a big syringe that you can use to either flush wounds out or give medications. Multi, multi use there. Um, banamine paste, because what horse also doesn't want to have banamine in its life? So, a tube of banamine paste. All right. And then the big pocket. So we have uh, several pieces of, this is a leg bandage. While diapers are nice, they're fantastic. They aren't always kind of big enough to wrap legs with. But uh, combi roll is what we call this. We've got a couple pieces in here. Amazing bandage material to do legs, along with gauze. Gauze, standing wraps are great. I'm not gonna lie, I use a lot of standing wraps. Brown gauze and vet wrap. And combi roll let you wrap the contours of the equine leg, unlike standing wraps and quilts. Uh, you can never go wrong with duct tape, as we all know. We like Gorilla Tape. We're going to go ahead and endorse Gorilla Tape and Veterinary endorsed right there. Um, and for the places that duct tape isn't appropriate, this is Elasticon. This is, this is medical duct tape, really. Um, this is the world's greatest bandage material in terms of sticking anything to anywhere. It is wonderful, wonderful stuff. So when we have a hard to bandage area, we'll get combi roll and vet wrap gauze on it. Then we use Elasticon at the top and bottom to make it stick where we want it to stick. Great stuff here. 
Uh, we have some non-stick pads, so you can put these over wounds, um, and it keeps our other bandage material from sticking to them. Great stuff. And what first aid kit would be complete without a diaper? Ah, and the most important component of the first aid kit, Spring Hill Equine's number prominently located right here. Our emergency line, 352-474-5007. In case you don't have it, save it in your contacts right now. 352-474-5007. There you go, emergency, right there. The other thing that we would like you to add to the first aid kit uh, in the card section is a list of your horse's normal vital signs. So when you've been practicing your TPRs that you just learned about, you can get an idea that your horse is normally on a rate of 28 or normally a temperature of 99. So when that temperature goes way up and it's 102, you know it's high, maybe it's not 105 high, but it's definitely high and that's not normal for your horse. Or some horses are normally a 28 on a heart rate and all of a sudden they're a 44. And that's significant if nothing else is going on in their life. So definitely write their normal vital signs. Also that microchip number, for the microchip you got at a discount when you came and picked up your first aid kit. So again, you can call us and sign up for your first aid kit that we'll put together for you. Uh, we also recommend putting a copy of the Coggins in here. Uh, I feel you can never have too many copies of a Coggins. Yeah, it's for safety thing. Yeah. Now, um, we would also put either near this, in it, attached to it in some way, an extra lead rope and halter. Can't ever have too many of those either. Yeah, and they always walk away. Um, and also a pocket knife or some sort of multi-tool and some towels. So. Can we get that? Can we get a close up of that there? All right. Like I said, we'll post this. You guys do not have to frantically write right now. But these are all of the things that are in the first aid kit, and along with the things that we recommend that you put into it. All right. Okay. So, along with first aid kits, comes hurricanes, right? Like, first aid kit, disaster. That's a segue. Uh, so, let's just talk briefly about hurricane preparedness. This is the time of year that we like to start thinking about it. While you're home, looking for home improvement projects, right? Uh, making sure that those weak areas of the fence are good to go. Um, you know, any of the trees that you're worried about, now may be a good time to take care of those. Just really take a look around your property and see if there's something that you would like to address before hurricane season hits. Make sure that your horse has a microchip. I cannot tell you how helpful microchips are. In Hurricane Katrina, most horses were reunited with their owners because the state of Louisiana has a high percentage of horses that are microchipped. That has to do with how they require things for Coggins, but what it showed us was the real effectiveness of microchips to allow first responders to find owners very, very, very quickly. So definitely get your horse microchipped. And the biggest thing about hurricane season is have a plan. Have a plan for where your horses are going to be during a hurricane. Have a plan for what you're going to do afterwards. If we don't have electricity for, oh, say, eight or nine days, uh, you know, you really just need to plan for all of those things that come with it. And now's a great time, right? We're all looking for, for things to do at home other than homeschool children, from what I understand. So, uh, Tony who I don't know where he is and he's not helping us tonight. He's missing, he is missing all of you guys. I have to say that seminars are Tony's favorite thing in the whole world. And he's very sad that you guys are all on Facebook and not actually here with him. It's very upsetting to him. So we've been having to console him all day that we're doing these on Facebook Live. So anyway, Tony has written multiple blogs about hurricane preparedness. So you can definitely find lots of information on our website. Um, telemedicine. Let's talk real quick about telemedicine. Uh, right now, if you don't want to see us, we don't blame you. We get it. <laughs> um, we do have a new telemedicine app called Medici, and you can go onto our website, springhillequine.com. We have a telemedicine page that will show you all that you ever wanted to know about how to contact us via telemedicine. So head there. Um, we have a great video, which our cameraman, Justin, volunteered to be a part of to show how to jog a horse and how not to jog a horse and uh, various other entertaining ways to not do telemedicine calls along with the proper way to then do telemedicine.
Justin Coffs with us. So again, head on over to springhillequine.com for that information. Uh, lots of stuff on our telemedicine page for you. And then we have a special bonus tonight brought to you by the weather. So we were super excited that it's rained for the last three days. That's been fantastic. We needed rain so badly that now all of the things that we learned in the pasture management seminar last month, we can all put to use because we've had some rain. But along with that rain comes skin funk, the bane of every horse owner's existence. So we are just going to talk to you real quick about CK products um, and why we love them. And we love them because they make skin funk go away or keep it from coming all together. So once the rain has gone through, you know, today's weather was pretty darn good. I make a plan for when I can bathe my horses with the CK shampoo. I really like how much this stuff foams. You don't need a lot of it. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest smell, but it's not horrible. Uh, you want to bathe them all over, paying special attention to the top line, you know, where they get the nice crusties on their butt. You want to really scrub up there and really do the lower legs. Let it sit for 10 minutes. I find this is a good time for me to go clean tack because otherwise I get bored and I don't wait 10 minutes and 10 minutes is crucial. So wait 10 minutes, let this sit, then rinse it off. If your horse is particularly prone to rain wrap or you already have a decent case of it going and we're trying to get it under control, the CK spray, I follow, once I've uh, bathed them, rinsed them, let them dry a little bit. I don't, I don't get them like, you know, I don't blow dry them, but I let them get a little bit dry. Uh, and then I will spray the CK spray on the areas that are at their worst. And the CK salve works really well on the lower legs, especially on the heels where they get uh, the greasy heel nasty stuff. CK salve works fantastic on that. The other thing that CK salve works really well on is, uh, it always makes me feel like I'm a brilliant groom, even though I'm not. That cannon bone funk they get on their hind legs it works fantastic to uh, get that to go away. You take a little bit of this, smear it on there, and a really pretty heavy kind of smear. Um, I like to think about how I like cream cheese on my bagels. Um, let it sit for about 24 hours, then come back with a wet washcloth and just wipe it off. And ta-da, you have lovely clean cannon bones, and it looks like you're an amazing groom, even if you aren't. So again, for skin funk, wash spray, schmear, and all are available here. We thank you guys very much for joining us for our Facebook Live. We have promised Tony that maybe next month, he didn't hear the maybe, but that's okay. Maybe next month we can get back to our regularly scheduled in-person seminars. But again, if you guys need us, we are here for you during